Hi again guys, Boyd here with you and welcome back. Well, can you believe it? We're already up to part six of our Polar Lights Enterprise refit build series, guys. Things are going along really fast on this one. And uh, we're going to get back to the bench here in just a couple seconds. We've got more work to do on the saucer today, guys. We're going to be doing some more LED lighting on that. And we're going to be adding our side walls with our window ports. And we've got a little bit of putty work to do on that, and I'll be taking you through that. We've got a lot to cover today. I've also got a couple little modifications that I'm going to show you guys that we can do on that saucer area to make the model look a lot closer to the studio model, guys, for the way it looked. There are a couple of little details that Polar Lights didn't get quite right on it, and we can easily correct those with a little bit of work and a little bit of effort, and uh, I think you guys will enjoy the results, so we'll be showing that to you as well today. We'll get started on all that in just a couple seconds, guys. I wanted to take a real quick time out and uh, say a big thank you to everybody out there that's been viewing the video build series so far, guys. Apparently you guys are really enjoying it. We're seeing some fantastic uh, viewership numbers here on the channel in the last month and a half or so. We've been hitting about 10,000 views per week, guys. Now that's just phenomenal for a little channel on YouTube that's talking about model building. And I think that's just fantastic. I think we're getting very close to something like 850,000 views overall on the channel. And when I look at the numbers, guys, we've done a little bit more than 200 videos here. And that's an average of about 4,500 views on each video. And that's phenomenal, guys. And what that tells me is that you guys are finding these videos useful and you're going back and watching them more than once. I get a lot of great uh, emails and messages from people that say that the videos have helped them out with uh, either getting back to the hobby from a long hiatus or just starting out from scratch and that the videos are useful to them for uh, finding information and uh, learning how to build their models. And so that's what the goal was, guys, when we started doing this two years ago. And I'm really, really pleased every time I hear from one of you out there and uh, talk about one of your success uh, stories and if we've helped in some small way that makes me feel really really good and so we're doing just fine here guys another quick note I want to mention is that uh, I've had a couple of the viewers out there in the last week or so uh, inquire about sending donations into the channel guys and I want to cover that topic real quick with you guys we're not asking for any kind of donations here guys I'm really uh, enjoying what I do like I said I do these videos for you guys I'd be out here in the shop building models anyway if I wasn't shooting the videos. But I bring my camera out here and I film what I'm doing and I talk to the camera. And when I do that, I feel like I'm kind of hanging out with you guys one-on-one -on -one and you guys are a bunch of my model building buddies out here in the shop with me. And it helps me to pass the time and it keeps me uh, motivated to keep going. And so that's all I'm looking for here, guys. Uh, I'd feel really guilty about taking any kind of donations. You know, we're doing really, really well. And thanks to you guys supporting my work and uh, the nice things you've said about my... Uh, work that I've done in the last year or so. I've been able to start doing a little bit of commission work and that's coming in really, really steady. I'm booked out for months ahead of time now and uh, we've got uh, inquiries coming in every day for more work. So it's really doing well, guys. I've got all these models and toys around me. I'd feel really bad about accepting any kind of donations. And again, we're doing this for you guys and we're going to be doing it for a long time, guys. No worries there. Everything's going very, very well. And uh, we've got a lot coming for you here on the channel. As I mentioned, we're going to be finishing up the refit here. After that, we've got this beautiful DeBoer's Reliant that will take you through that entire build. And then uh, starting in March, we've got uh, our big spring build contest over at Sci-Fi Model Action. I've got a great model kit picked up to build for that. And I'll be showing that on the channel here as well. So a lot of cool stuff going on, guys. So thanks again for the thought. We really appreciate it. Okay, so let's cover that. And we'll come back now and we'll get ready to go... Uh, Back to the bench here and get going on our saucer again. Grab something cold to drink, sit back and enjoy. We'll see you again in just a few seconds, guys. Okay, guys, well, here we are set up again, and you can see that we've been uh, continuing with our wiring on the upper saucer here. And now what I've done is I've got all my uh, circuits connected up here. Like we talked about, we ran a power wire all the way around the perimeter uh, to connect up our LED strip lights. I've now got my control board mounted in three spots here with my uh, hot glue and everything's looking good. I'll turn the power on here for you and you can see our navigation lights are working. We've got our thruster lights working now and uh, our strip lighting is coming through. I added this one really small uh, strip here back here for the uh, lighting opposite of the uh, rec deck. Now when we mount the rec deck room in here, which is a box that's uh, made out of uh, photo etch parts, We'll be putting some small LEDs right next to the edges of that because we don't want that to be overly bright and glare so that when we look inside, the room will be totally washed out and we won't be able to see the detail in there, but we'll cover that. We're also going to be doing the same thing here when we put the officer's lounge in. We'll be putting a couple of LEDs off to the side here just to get some nice uh, kind of warm lighting in that room. But I'm going to lay the uh, 
uh, saucer on the top here. This is the bottom half of the saucer, just to kind of give you an idea um, how well uh, you can see here that our, let me turn this overhead light off, you can see how nice and bright our windows are going to look, nice and clear all the way around. And our uh, navigation lights, you can see here, our uh, uh, thruster lights are going to come through nicely on the top and the bottom like we talked about using that 5mm yellow bulb and sanding it makes a makes the light kind of radiate out from that evenly and it looks really good. So, oh, wow, I already grabbed a peg on here. There we go. I'll take that off. But uh, what we're going to be doing next, guys, is we're going to come today and we're going to um, start putting some filler on our seams around here. So let me get set up for that. We'll come back in just a second, guys. We're going to break out our squadron putty here and a little bit of tape. And we're going to start doing that. So stay tuned, guys. Be right back with that one. Okay, guys. Well, what I've done here is I've gone in and I've used some of this nice blue 3M uh, painter's tape. And I've laid these on in these sections here. And I've been uh, just barely leaving a little gap there where our uh, seam is located on each one of these wall segments. And that's going to keep us from spilling too much uh, putty onto this when we start uh, applying it. And that way we're just going to have a little small area that we're going to have to work with here and clean this up after it's dry. And uh, let me tighten up on this just a little bit for you here. And we're going to get started on this one right here, which is our first one. And we're just going to go to work with our putty here. And this, this is the uh, good old Squadron Products white putty. I like this stuff because it dries nice and hard. And um, what I'll be doing with this is I'll be uh, coming back after we get this all puttied up and we'll sand it out uh, after it's dry. And then we're going to take our little tiny scribing tool and we're going to just rescribe the lines that are on this uh, area right here. And uh, we'll save our nice uh, sensor band detail on the saucer. Now, uh, one of the tricks to this too, guys, is we're going to have to repeat this a uh, couple of times because what we're going to have to do is we're working with this seam here, uh, which is a uh, vertical seam, but we're also going to have a seam running around the top here and also on the bottom edge, so we're going to have to be uh, taping this a couple of more times, but right now all we're focusing on is this uh, uh, these individual seams uh, between the wall segments, and we also are going to get a little bit of uh, putty inside the uh, holes where the uh, thruster ports are located, but that's okay. We can just drill those back out. Like I said, this this particular putty dries really hard, so you can shape it, you can mold it, you can scribe on it, and it will hold a nice tight uh, shape without being too soft like the uh, uh, 3M red putty is. So uh, just a little bit of difference with the applications of that kind of stuff. And I'm just putting enough on here to make sure that we're covered nice and even. And this particular one here I'm going to put a little bit extra because this is the airlock door. We want to uh, make sure we get that nice and even. And we're going to be going in there and with our hobby knife and picking out the excess. As I mentioned earlier, there's a uh, photo etch part that goes over the top of that. You guys are probably familiar with it. It's from the paragraphic set, so we don't have to be perfect on the bottom of that. We just want to make sure it's flat so that our... Uh, part will lay down in there nice and flush and uh, see if I get a little bit extra on the uh, tape right now it doesn't matter at all guys we're gonna be able to uh, pull that away but what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave the uh, tape on here so that we can sand this and not worry about um, sanding onto the uh, uh, sensor band itself and that we will preserve that detail like I said that makes this model really nice if you can finish it off that way it's just that little extra detail on there that looks really nice if you look up close to it later on a lot of these look good on uh, pictures but when you start looking at them really close that's when you're going to see the nice detail on it so that's going to do it for this part here guys we're going to move on now and we're going to come back and uh, start working on the bottom half of the saucer I've got to sand that down and then we're going to start uh, installing our LED lights in the uh, uh, navigation, uh, the, the right and left navigation light, and then the forward uh, uh, bow flashing light. So we'll come back with that and set up for that here in just a second, guys. Be right back.
Okay guys, I'm back with you and I'm just about ready to take the lower saucer here over to my spray booth and get this primed and light locked. But I've been doing a couple of little modifications to it before I did that and I wanted to show you what I was doing here. Uh, the very first thing I did is I went around and I got all these little window ports all cleaned up. Uh, they had quite a bit of flash in them and they were uh, some were larger than others so I made sure they were all opened up and nice and clean and all equal in size. I've also done that on all the uh, uh, spots where the navigation lights go and where our little uh, thruster ports are. And then what I've also done here is where the planetary sensor is, is I've opened up the center because we're going to be passing some uh, wiring through this to mount our SMD lights which are going to light the four uh, lighting outputs here that come out of the planetary sensor, the forward floodlight and the two marker lights on the side and the one at the rear that lights up the uh, little enterprise name that goes here. And uh, an important step here that I did too guys is I made these holes here a little bit bigger and the reason being for that is that this planetary sensor fits on here really tight and it's something that I learned from my last refit build. I had a hard time getting my uh, uh, planetary sensor to go down in there all the way and I'd already put together the saucer and I wound up uh, with a little bit of a gap around there and I had to go back and do some light blocking on that, you know, filling it and painting it. And uh, so this time I made sure that this thing fits down in here really flat and there's no gap at all, all, all the way around the whole thing. And it fits a lot better. Now another mo uh, modification that I did here, and I'll uh, take you in really close to it, and hopefully you can see it here, is uh, if you notice on the studio model, we have a forward kind of a slope to each one of these uh, 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 light ports, if you want to call them that, the four of them that uh, go around the perimeter here. They have a forward slope to them on the studio model, whereas on the Polar Lights kit here, you'll notice the parts are cut at a 90 degree angle, and it doesn't look right. So in order to... Uh, make that look a little bit better, a little bit more uh, realistic to the studio model. I just took my flat file here and I just uh, worked these. I made sure I maintain a steady angle and I just kept working it a little bit at a time until I got a nice forward slope on each one of those uh, parts there. And uh, that made it look a whole lot better, guys. I was careful not to go back too far and get into this detail here. But that makes that look a lot nicer. And you can see that uh, uh, it will look more, uh, much more like the studio model. And uh, that's just a little modification you can do really easily. Uh, the other thing that you might notice here, guys, uh, I'll zoom in on this here for you a little bit, is our phaser banks are gone. Now, um, another thing to talk about on this model, the studio model, where the uh, rectangle shapes here are for the phaser banks, and they have you know the rectangle and the little nubs that stick up there, the rectangle is molded above the surface, uh, and that's not correct for the uh, for the way the ship uh, should look. If you look at the studio model or any of the movies, you'll notice that the phaser banks are perfectly flat on the surface and they're just a painted kind of a mustard yellow color. Uh, and you have the uh, two little nubs of the actual phaser banks themselves that stick up. So what I've done is I've sanded these off. I used some uh, 180 grit paper here. And I just really carefully sanded in the area where the uh, phaser banks were and got rid of them. And then I came back afterward and uh, rescribed the lines here because I lost a little bit of my line detail with this really nice uh, little scribing tool that I have and just uh, rescribed each line uh, going down this way and I lost a little bit of detail on that uh, upper edge right there so I rescribed that back on there so what we'll do now is we'll be able to uh, mask this off later and we'll just paint that detail on there and we'll use a couple of uh, drops of uh, epoxy to make those little nubs on there and let those dry and then we'll paint those and that will look really nice and a lot more accurate to the way the uh, phaser bank should look on this ship and uh, we'll be doing the same thing on the top part of the saucer so that's another little thing that I wanted to talk about and uh, you know doing little things like that guys little details like that here and there going around the model that's the extra step that you can take that will uh, really put your model over the top and uh, somebody that really knows the refit or, or people that really know how the ship should look just doing little things like that uh, will make your build a cut above uh, uh, what the average build is doing and things like that so and they're not very difficult to do so it's something you might want to think about it's not absolutely necessary but uh, we're trying to do a really nice really nice close replica of the refit here uh, without going too crazy again there are some other things I'll talk about along the way uh, that we can do here and there to make this model look uh, look a little bit more like the studio model but uh, those are just a couple of things so alright guys I'm gonna head over to the spray booth I'll get uh, my priming done and my light blocking done and when we come back we're going to uh, install the rest of our LED lighting here into the saucer, which will be our navigation lights here on the sides and our uh, bow light here at the front, which will uh, uh, pretty much wrap up the lighting for this. 
Now we're going to be installing some strip lighting here on the bottom side of this as well that will face upward. That's going to light our bridge and a couple other things on the top part of the saucer. So uh, we'll be back with that in just a couple seconds, guys. Stay tuned. Okay, guys, well, I'm back again, and I've been working on uh, priming and light blocking the inside of the saucer here. And I've been working a little bit on the planetary sensor, too, guys. You can see I've installed some uh, SMDs in this. <clears throat> I get these SMDs from my friend Jerry at HDA Model Works. I'll put that link up on the screen here for you guys. You can contact Jerry over there and he'll hook you up with these. He has them in all different sizes and all different colors. I'm using a large one here at the front for the flood lamp effect that goes forward. On the bottom side of the saucer I've got two smaller ones, one on each side. Uh, the lights coming out of the side here are not that bright. And then I've got three uh, lined up, one in the center and one on each edge facing towards the rear. If you go and reference the studio model again, you'll see there are three pinpoints of light coming out of that. And that lights up our little Enterprise word here, just in front of the neck. And um, it turned out really nice. I'm going to turn the power on here for you and cut this overhead light so you can maybe get a better uh, look at it. And uh, you can see we're getting a really nice effect here. We'll get that nice flood lamp effect coming out of the front here, lighting that up, and uh, our nice uh, lights coming out the side here. And um, so that's looking really good, guys. So what we're going to be doing next is we're going to come back and um, um, turn the saucer over and install the rest of our lighting here. We've got a couple more LEDs to put in for our navigation light and our light here up at the front uh, for the white marker light. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'll cut the camera here real quick and come back and have that set up and we'll get going on that part. Be right back, guys. All right, everybody, well, we're back again one more time with you, and I'll tighten up on the shot here for you real quick so you can see. We've just uh, gone in and we've added our um, <clears throat> little uh, navigation lights here, making sure to keep our red on the uh, port side and our green on the starboard and our white here at the front. You can see we've got those on the top side. They're uh, mounted uh, nice and flush. They came out really, really well. So um, what I'm going to do here real quick on camera, guys, is show you just my way of uh, doing a little bit of light blocking here on these. Uh, and again, this is not the only way, but uh, uh, a way that I figured out that works pretty good. We want to make sure that these lights don't bleed into any of the other uh, lighting that's going to be on the model near the windows or anything like that. Now, I'm just using a little bit of this tester's paint. Uh, I don't really use this um, enamel for much of anything except for light blocking or things like that. It's, it's kind of an old-fashioned, out-of-date paint, and uh, there's a lot nicer paints that are out there now than uh, what this stuff is. But I'm just going to pick out a little brush here and uh, we're going to just uh, paint over the back side of our... Um, uh, I want to make sure I get a big enough brush here, guys. Uh, let's take one of these from over here. Um, we're just going to dab a little bit of this black paint because this enamel is really thick paint, guys, and it'll uh, cover and uh, stop our light leaks uh, from coming through here. And I'm just dabbing a little bit on the... Uh, let me get in the camera shot where you can see it here. That would help, wouldn't it? And I'm uh, just dabbing a little bit of paint on this uh, back side of this LED. Again, this uh, this tester's enamel is really thick stuff, and it'll dry fairly quick. And uh, we won't have any light leaking out of that uh, LED once we uh, power it up, and it won't leak into our windows or any other area of the model here once we get it all sealed up. So that's something that we want to do, and it's just is a really simple way to do it. You could do this with a tulip or some of the other stuff that some of the other people have been using out there. But uh, this stuff is very inexpensive, and again, I just I keep this tester's paint around here for just doing uh, you know simple stuff like that. Whenever I uh, paint any details on my models, I always like to airbrush everything on. I don't like to brush paint anything on or anything like that. You can you can see the brush strokes and things like that. So if you're trying to do a really really nice job and it a top quality job on a model here. You want to make sure that you uh, keep everything nice and smooth and nice and clean on the model on the outside. This Enterprise refit has got so much detail and everything on it that uh, uh, you want to make it look as nice as you can, guys. So, But this old enamel paint has a few uses still. So there you go, guys. You can see we just lightly covered that up and uh, now it won't leak any uh, light out of it once it's dry. We'll We'll let it dry really good and we'll check it to make sure. We might have to touch up a couple little spots, uh, but it usually only takes one or two coats of this stuff and you're good to go on that. So that's going to be a wrap for today's video, guys. I really appreciate you tuning in, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. 
And without you guys, we wouldn't be anywhere here on the channel, so I really appreciate it. And um, we'll see you again in the next couple of days. We're uh, slowly but surely doing a little bit of work on the DeBoer's Reliant II, and I'll show you little updates on that. We'll eventually be getting to where that'll all be put together, and that'll be an entire build series that I'll show you guys on that one step by step after we finish up our refit here. But I'll be giving you little tidbits of that as we go along. I'm really glad that you guys are interested in that one, too. I'm having a blast working on it. So we'll see you next time, everybody. Take care out there. And like we always say on the channel, everybody, happy modeling, you guys.